The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some alternatives and some ways to sell variable speed pumps to your customers. July 19th is the deadline for the manufacturers to stop selling single speed motors for most pools. And therefore, everyone's going to have to switch over to a variable speed motor from that point on. So I'll go over some strategies and tips on how to kind of communicate this to your customers. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right. And whether you believe the government should regulate this kind of thing across the board in every state is really a moot point at this point because they've already passed this regulation. And so July 19, 2021, after that date, you can't purchase, or the manufacturer, I should say, can't make a single speed, 1 horsepower, 1.5 horsepower, 2 horsepower, 3 horsepower, single speed pump and sell it. I believe 3 fourth horsepower or lower is still viable in some areas, depending on the energy rating. They have this new way of rating these pumps. It's called the WEP number. You can read about it, and it's kind of complicated, but... Uh, I don't want to explain it here because I really don't understand it 100% myself, how they got the rating. Um, but basically, um, you definitely can't purchase a one horsepower pump or above for an in-ground pool. Above-ground pool regulations are a little bit different, and so you're not quite as regulated for that. And besides that, most above-ground pools don't use a one horsepower pump or greater. They'll use a half horsepower or three-fourths horsepower. And I think some pools can get away with that. But the majority of in-ground pools cannot run properly with less than one horsepower in most cases. And so so the bottom line is with these new regulations, everyone's going to have to switch over to variable speed pump after that point because you just can't, you won't be able to find a single speed pump um, of that horsepower rating. And basically, this is a big expense for a lot of consumers out there, maybe a huge expense, I should say, because typically, let's say that, you know, Mr. Smith calls you and his pump his pump's not running so you go over there and you see that it's a um, 1.5 horsepower whisper flow let's say Um, typically what we do in the industry is we'll take that motor off of there and then replace it with a new motor leave the existing pump there and so that will cost 450 to 500 dollars to put a new motor on which is you know pretty affordable and it'll last for another five or six years and then you do the same thing again Typically, you can do this two or three times and keep the same pump there and just change the motor. And it's fairly economical for the customer. The lower horsepower is a little bit less expensive to change out because the price of the motor is a little bit cheaper. And then if you buy an off-brand cheapo motor, you can get it for probably half that price or $300 or something like that. But that old way of doing things is probably going to be gone or will be gone, I should say, after July um, 2021 because of the new regulations that are going into place. And so these motor swap outs are not gonna happen. Now there is an alternative to upgrading the whole pump, the variable speed pump, and that is the Century V-Green motor, uh, VS motor replacement. And there's a couple other companies that are making this particular um, replacement motor. Um, A.O. Smith, which is the same as Century, I should say they're not someone else making it. So A.O. Smith, Century, are making these variable speed motors with um, you can, replaceable on your existing pump. I don't know if I explained that correctly. So if you have an existing pump with a single speed motor, you could take that motor out and buy the Century V Green variable speed motor and put it on the back of your existing pump, which will save the customer a good amount of money depending on the horsepower of the V Green um, motor. And the reason why I focus on Century here is that Century Motor is already making the variable speed motor for um, Jandy, Floridra, and Hayward, um, as well as Penter, I think. So Century is the ma- major manufacturer of the variable speed motors anyway. So they have their own V-Green. Um, so they have a square flange and a round flange motor of various horsepowers. Now, if you get the 1.65 horsepower V-Green, it's about 400 bucks or so. So it's about the same price as a single speed motor, basically. And you'll just take off your single speed motor 
then you'll put the Century V Green uh, motor on there, and you just you just converted your existing pump to a variable speed pump. Now, when you get over to like the 2.7 horsepower version of it, you're looking at $700 or so. So at that point, you may want to go with just a whole new variable speed pump, especially if your pump is pretty old. If your pump is six years or older. I would say just swap it out for a variable speed pump and bite the bullet, pay that price, or convince the customer to swap it out, letting him know that the pump itself is too old for the uh, Century V Green replacement motor. But if the pump is five years or less, I definitely would say this would be a great option for you to sell to the customer, unless you're going to sell them the 2.7 horsepower version. And then at that point, it may be more logical just to get a whole 2.7 horsepower variable speed pump put on there. But of course, that's another 500 to 1,000 more to get a brand new pump put on there. And I think the second part of the question is, how would you know if you can get away with a 1.65 horsepower V Green versus a 2.7 horsepower one? And the answer is pretty simple. If the current pump that you're replacing the motor on is a one horsepower pump, then I think a 1.65 total horsepower V Green pump would be perfect for that pool. If you're at 1.5 horsepower, and you have a spa or water features, you're kind of on the borderline there with a 1.65 horsepower. I would prefer a 2.7 horsepower variable speed pump with an attached spa or water features or if a large pool, if it's a large pool that needs a lot of circulation. I kind of like the higher horsepower on my pool. I have a 14,000 gallon pool and I had a one horsepower variable speed pump on there for a while, testing it out. And I found that the 2.7 horsepower pump was just much better as far as you know the spa jets, circulation, things like that. When I ran at a higher speed, I preferred the higher horsepower. Now you're not gonna run it at 2.7 horsepower very often when you're using the spa or if you're gonna have your pool running on full speed. That's where you're gonna utilize that full horsepower. And it is a tremendous amount of power. So there's a big difference. You really don't wanna go from a two horsepower motor down to 1.65 horsepower um, variable speed motor, you're going backwards at that point. So the rule of thumb is that if the pool has a lower horsepower already on there, one horsepower, 1 1.5 horsepower, you can definitely put the 1.65 horsepower V Green um, Century variable speed motor on the back of there. If you're at a two horsepower or greater, then you would want to go with a 2.7 horsepower one. If you have a three horsepower motor on there now, 2.7 horsepower is not much different. It's pretty close to that so you can get away with it. So again, that's the rule of thumb that I go off of, and I think it's logical that you don't want to go backwards in power with your pool, unless you really have an oversized motor on there to begin with. You know, if you have a small pool, 10,000 gallons, and you have a two horsepower um, motor on there, and you don't have any um, water features or an attached spa, then you probably have too much horsepower for your pool anyway, and then you can go down. But again, maybe talk to a pool professional about which one they recommend, and they can assess it for you if what's more logical to do. So that's kind of like the budget way of upgrading your pool from a single speed motor to a variable speed motor. The Century V Green, you can buy them anywhere. And AO Smith also makes them. They're the same company. Um, so definitely, I think um, you can get either of those to put them on your pump. And then you can be within the regulation. So if you have a customer that has their motor burnout right after July 19th, and maybe even before that because you may not be able to find single speed motors at that time. I'm not sure how the inventory is going to look at that point. They're going to have a date stamp on each motor, I think, from the manufacturer so that they're within the regulation. So I don't know if it's going to dry up before that point or maybe there'll be some single speed motors floating around there for a while afterwards. But regardless, let's say you have a customer that later in the year has their motor burnout. Then you have that option of selling them a new pump which I think would be the first option in most cases, get a whole new variable speed pump put in there. You get the nice warranty with the new pump. You get, you know, just everything brand new basically. And then the other option would be just the variable speed motor that goes on the back of the pump. And again, I'm sticking with Century because I know they manufacture the motors for, for Hayward and for Jandy. And so I know they're very reliable, very efficient, and they're pretty much you know, you could be buying a brand that the major manufacturers are using already, and so you get away with using that particular um, sales pitch to a customer. So you can tell your customer that you have a variable speed motor available, not the whole pump, just the motor, 
made by Century Motors, which makes the variable speed pumps for Hayward and Jandy. And so you know it's a very reliable product. And in some, way, in some ways you can save them some money by doing it that way. And it makes it more palatable at the beginning to trans to um, convert them to a variable speed pump, get them within the regulations, because again, you're not going to be able to find a single speed pump at that horsepower on the market. So don't get me wrong, there are a lot of good reasons to upgrade to a variable speed pump. You may not agree with the fact that you're going to be forced to upgrade to that or forcing your customers to upgrade to that, but the variable speed pumps on the market today feature the TEFC, totally enclosed motors, so they're much more weatherproof, much longer lasting. Um, since they're pretty much water sealed, they're not going to um, be affected by harsh environments. And so you're going to get a TEFC sealed motor. By the way, the Century V Green motors are all TEFC uh, motors. And so you're going to get the good weatherproofing there with the um, V Green pumps. And another great benefit of variable speed pump, and you've heard me talk about this in my podcast, on my YouTube channel, the amount of electricity that you save with the variable speed pump is highly significant and it'll cut your electricity bill down significantly or sometimes in half because besides your air conditioner the second largest appliance you're running is your pool pump and it consumes a lot of wattage out there anywhere from 1200 to 1400 watts while it's running and with a variable speed pump you're going to cut that wattage in half maybe even more than half the way you set depending on how you set the run speed of your pump and if you're on a tiered system like California where I am in Southern California when you reach a certain tier your kilowatt hour rate is increased and if you don't reach that tier then your kilowatt hour rate is reduced or, or stays the same you're not paying double or triple for the same amount of electricity and so the variable speed pump will save you money in that regards but it'll save you money just by cutting down the amount of wattage you're using on your pump as you're running it so I'll give you my pool as an example I'm running it at at 1800 RPMs for about 10 hours a day and then I have a high speed what I consider a high speed maybe a medium speed I would say of 2300 RPMs for four or five hours depending on the season the rest of the day so my pool is running you know 15 16 hours a day but at a lower RPM and let me pause for a second and explain the RPMs of a pump or percentage of, of power output how horsepower output I should say too is a way of looking at it and if you have a single speed pump, let's say you have a 1.5 horsepower like I used to have here, single speed pump, it runs at 3450 RPM. So there's no way to throttle that down. It's going to be running at that speed all the time when it's on. So imagine a car going 80 miles an hour on the freeway and how much gas it consumes um, by going at that higher rate of speed. And then uh, imagine that same car dri driven at 40 miles an hour for the same distance. You're going to save um, money on the fuel consumption in that regard and so the same thing with the variable speed pump when you're running it at 1800 rpms or 2000 rpms you're essentially cutting the 3450 rpms in half and thereby cutting the electricity use in half but it goes further than that because at 1800 rpms it's roughly half of the 3450 rpms and if you have a 1.5 horsepower pump running at 3450 rpms you're using about 1200 watts of power let's say to keep it simple, but running at 1800 RPMs, you would think you'd be using 600 watts of power, but that's not the case with the variable speed pump. The way they work, it even will modulate that wattage even lower. And so at 1800 RPMs, it's only using about 130 watts of electricity, which is about having 100 watt light bulb on in your house for 10 hours a day versus having 12 100 watt light bulbs on in your house for, you know, if you run your pump six or eight hours a day. And so, you can see that the energy savings is pretty tremendous if you look at it, breaking it down by wattage. And then if you translate that to the kilowatt hour rate that you can go into based on how much electricity you're being charged for. So if you're running your single speed pump eight hours a day and generating 1200 watts of electricity, um, definitely your kilowatt hour usage rate is gonna go, is gonna be more expensive because you're gonna reach those tiers quicker. Um, by mid middle of the month, you're gonna be at the next tier already. And by the end of the month, you're going to be at the last tier. I think in California, in my area, they just changed it to three tiers instead of four tiers, which makes it even more expensive to run a standard speed, single speed pump. And so therefore, the energy savings is a great 
selling point of these pumps. And when it's running at 1800 RPMs, it's extremely quiet. So you're not gonna even hear it running. If you have your pump next to your window, you barely hear, hear this pump. You'll have to go back there and check sometimes to see if it's actually operating. That's how quiet they are. So energy savings is number one. Number two would be the fact that they run quieter. Even at 20, 2200 or 2300 RPMs, the decibel level is extremely low compared to a pump running at full speed. And so that's another great benefit. They run quieter, they save electricity, and since most of them are the TEFC um, totally enclosed motors, they're going to last a lot longer and be weatherproof. Um, definitely another selling point. And we'll go back to that car analogy. You're on the freeway going 80 miles an hour. Let's say you drove that way, you drove that car like that um, for five years. Of course, the engine is definitely not going to last a very long time being driven like that. And in the same respect, your single speed pump at 3450 RPMs doesn't last very long. Four or five years is probably the maximum you're going to get out of it. But with a variable speed pump, since it modulates at RPM and you're running your car at 20 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, maybe you'll reach 80 miles an hour once in a while when you use your spa or have the water features going. But in most cases, you're going to be running that pump at a lower RPM. And that's one of the reasons why the variable speed pump will last such a long time. You won't need to be running it at the full speed all the time because you can modulate it down and that'll extend the life of it. I have some variable speed pumps on my route that are the first generation Pentair and Teleflow pumps and these have been on these pools for over 12, 13 years now and are still working great. And so you're gonna get a very long lasting product. So yes, you're gonna pay three times the cost of what you would pay for a standard pump. However, you're gonna get that longevity, the energy savings, and also the quiet, the ability, the fact that it runs quiet in your backyard. So those are all really good selling points um, to tell the customer. I think one of the major selling points that you have in your arsenal now is the fact that the Department of Energy uh, mandates the fact that you can't sell single speed pumps. So now you can tell the customer, look, Mr. Jones, my hands are kind of tied here. The government has mandated that everyone go to energy efficient pool pumps. Therefore, the manufacturers have stopped making the particular replacement pump for your pool, and I can no longer purchase that pump, I mean that motor for your pool or pump, if they're going to replace the whole pump. So I can no longer purchase that product. Therefore, the only option that we have is to go with a variable speed pump. Here are the different models I recommend, and here's also one that can save you some money. It's a Century V Green. You can put it on the back, just like your regular motor, and save some money that way. Uh, however you want to sell to the customer, using the fact that you have no choice may be the tipping point for a lot of customers that in the past when you mentioned a variable speed pump or a var variable speed motor to them, they kind of balked at the idea and just said, nah, just go ahead and put a motor on for 400 or 450 It's not a big deal. Now they have no choice, and so maybe this will put push them to upgrade to a variable speed pump. And I'm sure that the major manufacturers will have literature available for you or maybe a website link you can send the customer to. I know Hayward already has it up there explaining the WEP numbers. And you can go, you can refer them to that website and they can explain the regulations coming down the pike for them. Um, definitely something good to do so that way the customer knows that it's not you that's going to be kind of forcing them to spend the extra money as the government. It's always good to blame the government for everything. So you can do that. You can blame the government for the higher cost of the pump for the customer. And definitely there's a lot of great manufactured pumps out there that you can go with. If you have an automated system, the Century V Green actually can interface with your automated system. So that's not a problem. But then again, I always recommend that if, let's say you have a, you know, Jandy Aqualink system, I definitely would recommend for the customer to get a Jandy variable speed pump. If they have a Hayward Aqualogic or Hayward Omnilogic system, I definitely would recommend a Hayward variable speed pump. And if they have a Pentair automated system, I definitely would recommend the Pentair and Teleflow pump for them. It's much better to have the pump that's manufactured for the automated system to interface correctly. You can get all of the interfaces out of it or all the, um, you know, all of the benefits of having the manufactured pump with the manufactured system versus you know putting in a different pump from a different manufacturer and having to buy you know some accessories to kind of help the automated system communicate with the pump. So I always recommend that if you have a single speed pump with an automated panel already at the pool 
or if the customer is thinking about automation in the future, you want to sell them the pump, the variable speed pump that matches that automated system. It just makes things easier for everybody and all the pumps are good at that level. All the variable speed pumps are pretty much equal, I think, in my mind at that level between Jandy, Hayward, and Pentair. And so you won't have any problems um, selling the customer on, on the variable speed pump from that manufacturer. They already have the manufacturer's automated system. And so selling them the pump for that particular automated system should be pretty easy. So basically your hands are tied as a pool service professional moving forward after July 19th. Manufacturers' hands are tied because they can't manufacture these single speed pumps anymore. Um, we can look at the illogical aspect of this regulation because if you had a 2.7 horsepower variable speed pump and you're running it at the full, you know, 3450 RPMs, you're going to use a lot more energy than if you had a 1.5 horsepower single speed pump at that particular residence. But logic aside, I think the Department of Energy was focusing on the fact that you're not going to run the pump at 3450 RPMs all the time. And if you're running it at 600 RPMs, let's say, you're only at 0 .50, 0 0.50 horsepower in most cases. So you're going to save, you're going to be within the regulation most of the time. Um, if you're running it at 1200, you're still going to be under that one horsepower mark. And so I think they're kind of banking on the fact that you're going to run it at a lower RPM, um, definitely to save energy and to you know not use so much energy on the grid causing you know all the different things that go with that and so for the environment i think that's what they're looking for they're not looking at it logically i guess they're looking at it more as an overall environmental impact um, but if you're in the industry you know that running a pump at full speed variable speed pump at full speed uses the same amount of energy as running a single speed pump at full speed so logic aside you know, the regulations are going to go into place and you're going to have to make adjustments for that. And so to recap quickly, if you want to save money and just put on a variable speed motor, the Century V Green is a great option. If you're getting to the higher horsepower V Green, you may just want to go with a brand new variable speed pump, a 1.85 horsepower or 2.7 horsepower versus putting, you know, a $700 um, V Green on the back of that thing. It may be better to get a whole new pump. If the pump is older than six or seven years, I definitely would recommend a whole new pump, variable speed pump in there versus just the variable speed motor replacement. And then the brands of pumps, there's many good ones. You have um, Leslie's Jacuzzi brand. Um, they have a new pump coming out, which is going to be really good. You have the Hayward pump, Hayward VS pumps, the TriStar. You have the Jandy Flow Pro pumps, and you have the Pentair IntelliFlow pumps. Uh, just one side note on the Pentair pumps, if you're going to get the Super Flow VS, it won't communicate with the automated system. And so if you have a Pentair automation, you definitely want to go with the IntelliFlow pump. Even though it's twice the price of the Super Flow VS, it'll communicate with your automated panel. And the Super Flow pump is mainly a standalone. The Super Flow VS is mainly a standalone VS pump, not made for automation. So just make that distinction. Because if you look online and you're looking at the Pentair VS pumps, you may gravitate towards the Superflow VS, but just note that the IntelliFlow is the only uh, variable speed pump that will communicate with the Penta automation at this point. And so basically, as a pool service provider, your hands are going to be tied after July 19th, um, which is a bad thing, and I guess a good thing if you need to sell a customer on upgrading their pump. And I personally like variable speed pumps. I know there's some complaints about them out there in the industry, um, that the pool doesn't look that great because the customer keeps it on low speed all the time. But you have to educate the customer. Let them know that they do need a high speed um, program at some of some kind to get their automatic cleaner moving, to get the water moving on the surface so that the pool doesn't look you know very stagnant all the time. And that's up to you as the pool service provider to educate the customer that, look, you're going to save a lot of electricity to begin with, and the pool does need a higher speed mode for cleanliness and for circulation and so program in that mode i'll probably do a separate podcast on the programming speeds that i like and how long i like to run them in pools but needless to say they do need to run the pool on a higher speed not 3450 rpms but maybe 2600 or 2400 rpms for a certain period of time to get the water really circulating and to clean the surface of the pool and if you're looking for more information on your pool care definitely go to my website swimmingprolearning.com You'll find a lot of great resources there, including an ebook for 
And if you're in the industry and you want to enhance your business, definitely check out my coaching program at fullguidecoaching.com. A lot of great benefits for joining the coaching program, including a discount on your general liability insurance. You can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.